Well, if you think you know everything about the new 2024 Road and Street Glide, today I'm gonna to actually cover seven secrets of these motorcycles that Harley really doesn't tell you. Now, of course, you could read the manual and find all this stuff out, but that's not as cool as watching a video, and hopefully I can help you out and teach you some little things about these new motorcycles. And of course, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. You could also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here and become a member with some pretty cool perks. Love to have you guys join us. Let's go ahead and get started. One of the first things is accessory mode. And so no longer do we have a knob that shows us, hey, accessory mode is here. Uh, you actually have to press and hold the trip button. And so by doing this, just holding it for a few seconds, that's gonna put you in accessory mode so you don't have to run the bike in order to play around with your settings or change anything. Now I actually got my bike from Orlando Harley and they delivered it for me, which is pretty awesome. So if you need a motorcycle, go talk to Billy down there. He's always done me really well. This is the third bike I've gotten from him. But one thing you wanna keep in mind is that if you are transporting the bike on a trailer, make sure you put it in transport mode. Now, no longer do you have to turn the ignition on and then back off with the turn signals and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, you turn the ignition on, then you turn it off, and then you hold the flash to pass and the left turn signal at the same time. Uh, they say 10 seconds, but it actually takes me less than that. And right there on the screen, it'll pop up in transport mode. To turn it off, you simply turn the ignition on. It'll go out of transport mode and you can ride your motorcycle once you get to your destination. It's a really simple process. Just make sure you do it. And no harm, no foul at this point, but one of the guys that did deliver to me forgot to put it in transport mode or he didn't know or whatever. And I'm, I'm, I do not blame him. I mean, it just, it, it was one of those things, you know, it can cause you a lot of heartache. It just, it, it, it sucked. My brand new bike was dead and uh, we figured out that the security system just drained my battery down to nothing. And so, yeah, I had to get my brand new motorcycle towed because it wasn't put in transport mode. Again, I don't blame those guys at all, but I would just want you to know if you're buying from a dealer, I mean, heck, even the dealer that I bought from, they didn't know how to put it in transport mode. These things are so new that nobody really knew the sequence or had to deal with this yet. And so now they've been updated with it. And so if they're delivering a bike or whatever, you may think, oh, well, they should know to do that. And yes, I understand that as well, but I'm not trying to shift blame or, you know, be like, oh my God, this place sucks. But this is just something you should know if you're going to trail your motorcycle or you're going to buy it from somewhere, just, just remind them, you know, just say, hey man, uh, can you guys put it in transport mode so I can actually ride my motorcycle when I get it. Another thing you want to know is Apple CarPlay. And so Apple CarPlay is wireless now. Okay, which is freaking awesome. No more wind module or anything like that, but you need to have a headset connected in order to use this. I was talking to a couple of guys when I went to this Harley Davidson event in Las Vegas, specifically riding in the Ozarks, and uh, he actually uh, hooked me up with the guy at Cardo. They sent me a Pack Talk Edge, and it worked out perfectly as far as the timing because I need this in order to use my Apple CarPlay. And one thing I'm gonna tell you is the battery life on this is absolutely incredible. Easy to use, buttons are audible, they're easy to get to, and the sound out of the JBL speakers this thing comes with are freaking fantastic. They make them for half and full helmets as well. Uh, this is a fantastic unit. If you wanna release it off the side of your helmet, you literally press down, and it slides off, you wanna put it back on, it magnets right on just like that. And so if you're looking for a good wireless headset with the latest technology, latest Bluetooth, latest mesh technology and all that kind of stuff, it supports up to a bunch of riders and you guys wanna talk back and forth on your long road trips or just be able to use your Apple CarPlay on your new 2024, the Pack Talk Edge is the way to go. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description and the discount code associated so you can save yourself some money on these. Another thing you wanna know about the 2024 Road and Street Glide is you have heated gear connections now. This is just one of the small things that really helps these bikes stand out. And, and in my opinion, 
you know, it kind of shows that, okay, Harley is really paying attention. Not only, you know, have we gotten away from, you know, your stretch kind of slam uh, bagger scene into more of performance oriented, but also just little things like heated gear connections. You know, you got two of them right up under the seat, remove your screw, or, you know, if you have one of the lockable uh, screws so somebody doesn't steal your seat, that's, a, that's something you should definitely get. Uh, but either way, you lift it up, boom, you got two heated gear connections right under the seat. Now, another great thing about the new 2024s is you have an additional inch of travel in the rear suspension. And this has been one of the more surprising uh, benefits and effective changes that they've made in, you know, some of the things you don't see, right? There's the, the aesthetic appeal and the screen and all this kind of stuff that you see, but some of the things you don't see uh, are really impressive and that includes the suspension. But there are things you can do with the suspension now that you couldn't before, whereas you just had a, a single knob or even just a single preload adjustment that you could do on the older models. Now you will adjust the right hand side for you and your passenger weight, and then you can adjust the left hand side for any cargo that you have, including a tour pad. Now, of course, they show you how to do all of that in the manual, but I thought one of the cool parts is, is that you can quickly adjust for your passenger on the fly. You don't have to do any kind of measurements or anything like that. So essentially, you move the left saddlebag, and assuming that you have pretty minimal cargo, you're just going to take that adjustment knob and move it to max temporarily while you have your passenger on the back, and then you can back it back off to where it was before whenever you go back to solo ride. Now, one thing that is actually right there in front of your face, but might not be so obvious at first is the fact that you have a mute button for the radio now. You might be thinking, well, why is that a big deal? Well, on the Boom GTS system, there was no mute button. At least I never figured it out and I had it on two different bikes. And so, hey, maybe, maybe I just never figured it out. But from what I've seen, you only can turn it all the way up or turn it all the way down, the radio would start, you know, in whatever position it was left in, which is typically all the way up. <laughs> so it was really annoying. And then of course, if you needed to turn it all the way down to take a call or any number of things, you know, you just had to, you know, cycle through the options or cycle through the, uh, the volume and get it down as low as you needed to. So now you have a mute button. Now I didn't really have to worry about that over the past year or so, because when I went up to Volunteer Audio, they changed my head unit out for me and that gave me the ability to have a mute button. But sometimes it's just the small things and now on the 2024 models, we have that ability to just mute the radio or whatever's going on. Another thing that is kind of subtle and is right there on the bike, but you may not notice at first, is the fact that we have an adjustable brake lever. Now I'm really appreciative that they put this on here. This was very useful whenever I went out to the Las Vegas uh, outdoor road course and actually learned some tips from Kyle Wyman uh, himself. And so it was an amazing experience. I've talked about it in a couple of videos, uh, but I learned a lot there. And one of the things I was able to do because I do have smaller hands is I was able to adjust that brake lever, bring it in a little bit closer to the throttle and so that way when I would roll off and go on to start my, my first 5% of pressure of brake pressure, it was actually easier to get to it as I was approaching and coming into the corners, trail braking and all that kind of stuff. Now I do wish that they put an adjustable lever on the left hand side for the clutch, uh, which is where it's really needed, especially if you have carpal tunnel, any kind of dexterity issues in your hands, but Hey, we have it on the brake and uh, that's at least a step in the right direction. And it really does make a huge difference no matter how big or small your hands are. Now I mentioned that you don't have any adjustability in the clutch and while that's mostly true, it's not 100% true. And what I mean by that is there is an adjuster. And so because we now have the coolant bottle on the left hand side, they've you know redesigned where the horn is. It's kind of down there in the front of the bike tucked away actually looks a heck of a lot better being down there as opposed to you know right under your ignition coil on the left hand side but regardless now they've moved the cable clutch adjustment to the right hand side so essentially you have a sleeve you pull that sleeve up and you're going to get 
I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch of play, extra play in the clutch lever itself. So it'll grab a little bit quicker. Uh, but unfortunately right now there are no actual adjustable levers out there on the market, not that I've seen anyways. And I've used uh, Oberon levers from Hog Leverage now for years. And they're fantastic, uh, but unfortunately, they're just a couple of months out from actually being on the market. So if you need to adjust that clutch lever, you got a little bit of adjustment there, but until the actual adjustable clutch levers come out, that's pretty much what we're stuck with. Now, this one's pretty interesting. Of course, all the new bikes actually have, uh, you know, all of your safety features, and that includes hill hold control, but you actually need to activate that in order to use it. I was on an incline the other day and I was like, man, this thing is not working at all, not realizing that you actually have to activate it. So let's say you come up to a stop, you fully stopped, and now you're sitting at that red light. Obviously, you, you know, you're still in gear because we're preparing for somebody coming up behind us, not paying attention. But if you quickly just stab the brakes or just give it a little bit of extra pressure, either on the front or the rear brake, that will enable your hill hold control. Now, of course, if you release the clutch, if you hit the throttle, anything like that, it's going to automatically disable it, but it's just gonna keep a little bit of pressure on the brake for you, so that way you can uh, you know, easily get up a hill or an incline, you know, and it just makes it a little bit easier for you. Now, if you're coming to an emergency stop, right? Emergency braking, uh, this may actually activate hill hold control as well. So when you start to move, you know, you just want to keep that in mind. You know, a lot of the times if you are at an emergency braking situation, it's sensing that you are coming up to a hill or it wants to, you know, kind of help you out in those steep incline situations. So once you get to a stop, you may not even have to, you know, actually actuate it. It may already be actuated for you. Just something you want to keep in mind. It's one of those passive things that's not really going to interfere. It's just going to help you out as needed, but you do need to activate it. So there's a little uh, hint for you on that. And the last thing I want to talk about is the different layouts on your infotainment. So if you're in your, uh, you know, your sport display, your touring, or just your standard display, obviously you are going to have, you know, a different layout between these. So if you're in standard, you're going to have your speedometer, tachometer. They're going to be digital, but they're going to have analog appearances. And then you're going to have other little widgets and stuff, you know, as far as the direction you're heading or your TPMS, you know, what your pressures are actually reading. There's a whole host of options on here, including ambient air temperature, your coolant temperature, but you can actually change these no matter what mode you're actually in. So no matter if it's sport mode or if it's, uh, you know, standard mode or touring mode, if you go through and you hit that trip button, it will go through and cycle those different widgets so you can kind of adjust what you want to see on that screen even further. There's a lot on these motorcycles. And of course the sevens theme does really well on the channel. You guys seem to really like that. But if there's some other secrets that maybe you found with the new 2024 road or street glide, make sure you leave those things down below because I may use those in a future video. And of course, as I continue to learn this motorcycle, I'll make sure I go through the manual so you don't have to, and maybe do a part two if you guys really enjoy this type of content. If you like what I do as a whole, consider subscribing. You could also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here, gain access to some pretty cool perks and become a further part of the community and what we do here. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.